Okay, I'm, I'm actually really excited today because we might get to do something that I've been waiting to do for several months now. And it's also something that you've probably been waiting for me to do for several months now. And that is hopefully wall mounting this PC onto this wall right here, right above the triple monitor display. I mean, how freaking awesome is that gonna look? And today we might actually get to do it, assuming that two things go through smoothly. The first of which is the power supply. So remember last time we had two different Fantex Revolt X power supplies. Neither of those units worked, so I ended up swapping it out for this NZ XT E850 works perfectly fine, but the custom sleeve cables that Joey from Ensource made for us are not compatible with this PSU. So instead of waiting another week or two for the new sleeve cables to come in, Fantex actually sent over a third unit, but this one's slightly different. This is the Revolt Pro, not the Revolt X. The Revolt Pro is intended for single system setups, whereas the Revolt X is more of a dual system PSU. Maybe that'll make the difference, I don't know. But if it does and this unit works, we can use these cables and press on. The second thing we need to check is that we need to verify if this system can actually give a video signal to all three of these panels simultaneously. If you remember in the last video, the reason why this thing wasn't giving us a video signal at all is because of the display port cable I was using. The second we popped in an HDMI 2.1 cable, voila, video signal instantaneously. But I only tested that with one display. Now I gotta try doing an HDMI 2.1 cable and two display port 1.4 cables running to these monitors simultaneously to see if it'll drive all three panels. If the PSU checks out and the display cables check out, we can move ahead with wall mounting the sucker. So that's what's on the agenda today. Let's get it done. Okay, got the PSU hooked up to the motherboard, just our 24 pin ATX and our 8 pin EPS for the CPU. So far, so good. We've got power to the board, but we were getting that with the Revolt X as well. So that doesn't necessarily mean squat. <sighs> this is the moment of truth, guys. Before that, this video was brought to you by Warpath. Warpath is a historically accurate World War II inspired real-time strategy game that lets you command troops and select an endless range of battle options to dominate other real players. The game's mechanics are really well balanced and kind of feel like a mix of Red Alert meets Warhammer, but it's all online and played from your mobile device anywhere, anytime. Inspired by real events, experience the Normandy landing, the defense of Moscow, and other iconic moments from the Second World War. All the units in your arsenal stay just as true to their originals as well, while letting you modify and upgrade a host of different weapons. The chapters of the game are varied, with a thoughtful plot and cinematic gameplay to provide an engaging experience at all times. On top of that, best-in-class graphics, awesome sound effects, and voice acting offer a surprising amount of immersion from the palm of your hand. You can even fight alongside comrades by joining other units around the world in the battle for resources, territories, and war. While the game is definitely challenging, one cool thing is that you get to keep all of your resources should you be defeated on the battlefield. Even if your alliance loses its territory, there's always a chance for redemption in Warpath. Right now, download and play Warpath using my link and invite your friends to join. You might have a chance to win a PS5, Nintendo Switch, or tons of Amazon cards. Check out the giveaway link in the description below to get started. Since we'll probably see pigs fly before reasonably priced graphics cards become available, grab your mobile device and start playing Warpath today. You're in command now. Please. What? What? Not even surface mounted power. What is it with these PSUs? What's the deal? Okay, last thing I'm gonna try here is using the stock cables that came included with this PSU rather than the extensions. I don't think that's the problem, but we might as well just eliminate it as being one. Okay, all right, all right, stock PSU cables. Attempt number two, not holding my breath. <gasps> You! Ooh! Ooh! No, 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 this doesn't make any sense. This makes no sense. I remember with the Revolt X, for both units, I used the stock PSU cables, eliminating the sleeve cables as the issue. So why all of a sudden is it giving us problems now? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, uh, let's let's do one at a time. I'm gonna swap out one cable at a time. First, we'll do the uh, the eight pin. Okay, let's try this. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, now I'm gonna switch this back to the stock cable, and we'll use this 24 pin sleeved cable. Okay, let's try this again. Oh snap! 
this is working fine. It looks like it was this guy the whole time. Was this, were you the reason why we've been having so many issues, little guy? Hold on, hold the phone. I think the way that these PSUs are designed, the, the way that the cable layout is, is that the CPU cables are identical to the PCIe cables. So we might actually be able to still use a sleeve cable here if this is compatible. Hold on, give me, give me a second here. Aha, aha, it does fit, it does fit. So maybe, maybe this will work. PSU on, power on the LEDs. Ah, interesting. So none of these eight pin cables are working. What? Wait, I think there's, I have one more. I have one more that I can try out. Okay, just swap cables. This is the last cable that we can try out here. Nope. Okay, there's something going on. This was, this was the issue? But I could have sworn I used the stock PSU cables for the Revolt X in the last video and it still didn't work. I'm gonna verify that really quick. Ah ha ha, right there, see? I did use the stock PSU cable and it still didn't work. I feel like I can't really troubleshoot that right now. I don't have the proper testing or hardware to actually do any of that. I'll have to just pass on the notes to Fantex and hopefully they can get to the bottom of it. But for now, for the time being, it looks like we can get away with using this unit after all. We just have to use the stock eight pin EPS cable for our CPU, which is fine. I'm totally fine with that because that's the least visible one anyway. Like you're only gonna see it in the very top left corner here. But despite this really weird quirk, I, this is good news. This this is good news. It means we can move ahead with installing this power supply, getting the system up and running, and then moving on to our display cables. That's a whole other can of worms. We'll just, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, so these are the DisplayPort 1.4 cables that I got from Cable Direct. Let's hope they're better at making cables than they are at spelling. But uh, you can see here, I think it says somewhere here, DP 1.4 VESA certified, rated for up to 8K. Obviously we don't need 8K, but we are gonna try to push 4K, 144 Hertz. That should do the job. I've already unpacked one of these cables, which is right here. Look how thick these freaking DisplayPort cables are. This is you. This is the guy she tells you not to worry about. Like, look, why is it so freaking thick? I don't know, but I just hope it works. That's all I care about. This is the HDMI 2.1 cable that's already connected to the middle panel. We've got one display port connected to that display, and now I'm gonna hook this one up to the third monitor, and we'll give it a whirl. Before we continue, a special thanks to Recover It for sponsoring this video. When it comes to your digital data, there are a few things more daunting than losing or accidentally deleting important files. Whether it's family photos, business documents, or personal records, we've all felt the dread of losing something irreplaceable. But don't fear, Recover It is here. Recoverit is an easy to use data recovery app, and since 2003, it's helped over 5 million users rescue their deleted files, photos, videos, emails, and more. The app lets you restore files from a multitude of devices, including PCs, Macs, hard drives, flash drives, SD cards, the list goes on. Once you've launched the software, simply scan the disk where your files were stored, use visual previews to confirm which files you want to recover, and give the app a moment to resurrect your files from the dead, like some digital data necromancer. Don't let your precious files slip away. Click the link below to get your data back now with Recover It. All right, here we go. <sighs> Good to see the power supply is still working. Thank God. And I am so glad, for the record, let me just say, I am so glad we get to use this PSU from Fantex now because this grill, it just, oh, oh. Oh, okay, that's a display port panel and it's working. So that's good. As soon as we get to the desktop, we can try activating these two monitors, get signals on those. Oh, oh, do, 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 do. Huh? I saw that one light up. That one's lighting up. That one's lighting up. <gasps> yes. We're in, we're in. OMG, we got all three panels going. This is fantastic. Thank the PC God. That still begs the question though, was the initial issue with my DisplayPort cable or the fact that I hadn't yet installed GPU drivers? Or was it both? Was it a combination of things? I'm not sure. Actually, I'm very curious. Why don't we actually unplug all these and use the original DisplayPort cable right here and see if the GPU driver installation fixed it. So pretty. You're pretty, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are, you're a pretty PC. This cable that previously wasn't working is now working. So I think it was a GPU driver issue. I think now that we installed the GPU drivers for the 6900 XT, it's able to accept DisplayPort 1.2 cables, even if they're not VESA certified apparently, and voila. But uh, I'm still probably gonna use these thick boys anyway because they're longer and we're gonna need the extra length to run them through the wall and stuff, so. But yay, we cleared the PSU test, we cleared the cable test. It's time to wall mount this guy. Oh my gosh. All right, so 
We can move on, I'm so excited. Okay, so we've got our, our cable kit, our wall cable kit. This is just so we can pass cables through the wall cleanly. It's got an integrated power strip, so we're not breaking code or anything like that. And then we have the wall mount. Initially, I wanted to get a wall mount that had four mounting points, like one, two, three, four, but I would actually need two studs to do that, and the studs on that wall just don't line up. In fact, there's one stud right smack in the middle, right behind this monitor, directly behind it in the center, and then there's obviously studs on either side of that, but those studs are too far apart. Part. It's too wide of a distance for a regular mount to cover. I would need a super wide wall mount that would actually probably be wider than the width of this case. And obviously that would look really dumb if you could see the wall mount sticking out from behind the chassis. So, this is our guy. It's got a 70 to 80 pound weight capacity. This system doesn't weigh more than 40, 50 pounds, so we should be totally good on that. Let's do it. Okay, the PC is on the wall, but we're not out of the woods yet. It is tilting. I, I screwed in the, the screws and I tried to make it as straight as possible. It's not happening. This arm mount is not designed for PCs. It's designed for TVs, and most TVs these days are pretty flat. They're pretty thin. This is relatively front heavy for, for this particular arm mount. So that's why there's a serious tilt and I don't like the way it looks. So even though we're very close to being done here, um, I, I'm gonna have to MacGyver something because there's no way that I can get this any straighter than it already is using the stock hardware. So we have to get a little creative here, which I've already begun the process of doing that. Okay, so here's a here's a peek behind. You can see that uh, we got the wires, by the way, behind the wall and stuff. I just have to route them a little bit more neatly, uh, but we'll do that in a sec. So this is what I did. Uh, there's actually two screws on the back of this case that thread perfectly with, with thumb screws. So I took some thumb screws and I had these little hooks on hand. I just mounted those to the back of the case, one on each corner at the top, and then I mounted a third one right here. This is into the stud. And basically what I'm gonna do is use rope and, and, and tether it. I'm gonna tether the system to the wall. I'm gonna pull it taut so that it actually forces it it straight. On top of the rope, I've got some, some hooks. These hooks are nice because you can actually um, adjust the tension just by twisting them and stuff. That'll allow us uh, granular control over it. And then these hooks will go on to the one that's in the stud there on the wall. So hopefully that works. I have no idea. I, if, I feel like it should in theory, physics and stuff, but I guess we'll see. If that works, assuming that it does go through and everything's fine, then we can start doing cable management. I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. We'll have this thing hopefully flat and straight on the wall, booted up. We'll have it all glorious with the monitors and stuff. It should be awesome if everything goes smoothly. Okay, that was a whole lot of fail. I tried and tried many, many different ways and I didn't get anywhere. This uh, this just wasn't working. I think the reason is, is because the hooks here on either corner, they're just, it's too much at an angle. Uh, for example, if there was just one hook on the back of the system right in the middle, and then there was another hook right behind it on the wall, and we could just do a straight line, then that would probably pull it taut enough. It'd be a direct connection. But the problem is, is that the stud isn't completely centered with the system. I thought it would be, but the reason why it's not is because the mounting plate right here is actually offset by roughly two inches from the center of the mounting plate here. So yeah, basically it didn't work and I'm gonna have to deal with the tilt for now. There's gonna be a follow-up video where I actually put the whole setup together with peripherals and everything else. And in that video, I'll figure out a solution for making this straight. In fact, if you guys have any ideas on how to make this straight, let me know in the comments. I need help. On that note, I'm gonna finish what I can do right now, which is tidy up the cables and uh, we'll be back in a bit.
progress we've made so far today, I've spent a good, <laughs> oh, I don't, I'm afraid to admit it, like 10 to 12 hours today just working on this. But so far, totally worth it. It looks super clean already. And this is by no means the, the final look. This is just to give you an idea of what we've done so far. I'm gonna change out the peripherals, probably a different Ensemble One mouse pad, different wallpaper. This is just to give you an idea of what it looks like right now um, with everything put together. I haven't even put the, the tempered glass, I guess, front panel onto the case because I didn't want it super glary. Plus I gotta save some stuff for the next video um, when we'll actually do the final reveal of everything. You can see I haven't done cable management, but just to give you a quick overview and rundown of what we did today, we mounted this PC to the wall and we still need to figure out a way, of course, to make it completely straight. Oh, here's a look at the backside of everything. Actually not too bad, pretty clean, fairly tidy. There's some more tidying up that I could do, especially with, like the camera and stuff, but uh, overall looks pretty good. So we mounted the PC to the wall and it looks glorious up there. I just hope it doesn't fall and kill me one day. We also have the camera and microphone for our stream setup. So I just bought like one of these little uh, arms for it to put a tripod head on it so I can just like hot swap it or not hot swap, just like quick disconnect. Why am I using all these PC terms? Here's the microphone, Sennheiser MKH416, a beast of a mic on a boom pole from Neewer. And you can see that I actually, uh, I bought a wall mount for that as well. So they could just stick into the wall since there's just not enough clearance to actually mount it to the back of the desk, it would just interfere with the wall. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, the monitor is looking great as well. And let's see what else. Oh, as far as like what I've connected to the system, obviously we have the three panels. There's ethernet, which is 50 foot, I believe. That's just been routed very messily, haphazardly to the router up there. But uh, at some point or in the next video, I'm gonna route it cleanly, probably hug the uh, underneath the desks all the way around up and back. So it's super clean. And I also routed two USB 3.0 extension cables, which are out right here, you can see my, my keyboard's already plugged into one of them, but I'm actually gonna uh, plug in a couple of USB 3.0 hubs to these, so I have even more ports to play with. But uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna mount those USB 3.0 hubs underneath the desk, so it's just easy access and out of sight. I'll have an audio interface with XLR input and stuff for the microphone, somewhere within reach, that'll be visible, of course. And let's see what else. You know, it's looking a little blank up here. Obviously, we're, we're only like halfway done with the whole setup and stuff, but I was thinking maybe some bookshelf speakers on either side. I don't know, what do you guys think? Any ideas? There, there's a bunch of other things I could do. Possibilities are limitless and all, but uh, if you guys have any uh, suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Um, this is uh, still a work in progress and nothing's really set in stone, except for the monitors and the PC, of course. You know what's kind of funny? I can hardly reach the power button up there. Uh, uh, like I could, I could if I really wanted to, but I've been using the, the surface mounted power, but I'll probably have to get, ooh, you know what? Maybe I'll bring back this guy, my big ominous button of doom. Just set it somewhere on the desk. You can actually program this. I got it on Amazon. I'll link it in the description. In fact, everything that you see here, this video, I'll, I'll link in the description for you guys. You can program this to do pretty much anything like wake your system up from sleep, lock your system, blow up your enemies. No, it doesn't do that. But uh, that'd be kind of a fun little, I don't know, accessory trinket thing on the desk. I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out. We're, we're gonna dress this up and stuff. Also, I bought some RGB LED strips for behind the system. So there'll be a glow all around the system when that comes in and that should look pretty sweet. Oh, and remember, remember how I wasn't sure or if the riser cable was gonna work with the capture card. Well... Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Okay, that's, that's, that's it, but yay, it works, thank God. But I'm gonna cut it off here, guys. It's been a long day. I hope you guys enjoyed the progress. I hope you're enjoying the, uh, the, the build log so far of this new setup. Let me know what you think down below. Toss a like on the video, get subscribed if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next video.